With his dome helmet, purple cloak, and fishnet-covered green bodysuit, Mysterio's an instantly recognizable supervillain. But just because you can recognize him on sight doesn't mean you know everything about the arachnid-hating trickster who's been one of Marvel's most tenacious villains. Of everyone who's ever worn Mysterio's fishbowl helmet, Quentin Beck, created by Steve Ditko and Stan Lee, is by far the most well-known. Here to save the world from the evils of technology corrupting the human spirit. Are we being punked? Originally a stuntman and makeup artist who turned to crime after getting frustrated with the movie industry, Beck first appeared in Amazing Spider-Man number 13. His first step in taking down Spider-Man was to impersonate the masked webhead by using his technological prowess to mimic Spidey's powers and frame him for various crimes. With Spider-Man's popularity at an all-time low, Mysterio could swoop in as a hero when he took down Spider-Man, along with keeping the money he'd stolen earlier. As you'd expect, Spider-Man took down Mysterio and cleared his name, but Mysterio would continue to pop up over the years including a role as one of the original members of the Sinister Six. However, one of his most interesting roles came in 1980, when Beck was revealed as having actually appeared way back in the second issue of Amazing Spider-Man, disguised as one of a crew of aliens in a truly bizarre early story. This helped to establish what is arguably Mysterio's greatest strength as a character. He can make any story work with his mastery of illusions, no matter how weird it might get. Mysterio's focus is usually less about killing Spider-Man than trying to drive him insane, a quirk that shows up very early in the character's identity. In 1965's Amazing Spider-Man number 24, Mysterio's dedication to the long con is truly demonstrated when Dr. Ludwig Reinhardt arrives at the Daily Bugle, making a compelling case that Spider-Man is a hair's breadth away from complete insanity. Spidey shrugs it off at first, but when he begins to see his arch-villains crawling out of the walls to attack him before disappearing in smoke, he's a bit more convinced. He pays Dr. Reinhardt a visit to see if he can get some help, but the hallucinations get so bad that Spider-Man gets one step away from revealing his secret identity. Fortunately, Daily Bugle boss J. Jonah Jameson bursts in to accuse the not-so-good doctor of being a fraud. With his mind clear, Spidey quickly defeats Dr. Reinhardt and discovers, as you might expect, that it's actually Quentin Beck in disguise. While Beck's plan wasn't successful, it established his modus operandi early on. Mysterio could never beat Spider-Man in a fair fight, so he uses deception to drive the wall crawler to defeat himself. Another notable attempt at getting Spidey to crack came in 1992's Web of Spider-Man No. 90. In the issue, Spider-Man finds himself taking on the world-devouring Galactus and wakes up afterwards to discover that he's a card-carrying A-list celebrity who's been enjoying the good life ever since his brief stint in the wrestling ring against Crusher Hogan, an event that happened way back in his very first appearance. Something's amiss on the set of his newest feature film, when some of his toughest villains attack. After dispatching Hobgoblin and Venom, Spidey figures out what's really going on. Mysterio hired Max Schiffman to help him construct an entire alternate life for Spider-Man to get trapped in. While the plot is classic Mysterio, the issue is notable for an additional wrinkle that it provides to Mysterio's character. While fighting Spider-Man, Mysterio, disguised as Venom, reveals that when his helmet was cracked during their first fight, it exposed Quentin to the hallucinogenic mists that lets him control illusions. With his exposure to the mists, his own grasp on reality was shattered leaving him unable to tell illusion from reality. It's an interesting idea, but it's only occasionally been revisited since. The Marvel Universe has always been connected. The very first issue of Amazing Spider-Man has him dropping by to hassle the Fantastic Four, and Spidey and Daredevil in particular have an especially long bad guy exchange program. The Kingpin, Daredevil's greatest and most well-known archenemy, was originally a Spider-Man villain and the Owl, Electro, and of course Mysterio have all jumped back and forth between the heroes. In Guardian Devil, a 1998 arc of Daredevil written by filmmaker Kevin Smith and drawn by future Marvel editor-in-chief Joe Quesada, Daredevil wrestles with the responsibility of taking care of a child that seems to either be the Messiah or the Antichrist. However, after a quick consultation with Doctor Strange and Mephisto, the actual, literal devil in the Marvel Universe, he realizes that he's been drugged and that the baby is just a baby. 
Mysterio, newly diagnosed with lung cancer and an inoperable brain tumor from his years of getting high off of his own hallucinogenic supply, had enacted a grand revenge scheme against his second most hated foe. Once the trick was revealed, Mysterio was hopeful that Daredevil would kill him. Once that failed, Mysterio took care of the matter himself, in a death that spelled the end for Quentin Beck's run as Mysterio for a while. I always did like a good cliffhanger. While there are other people who have worn the Mysterio mantle in the main Marvel Universe, also known as Earth-616, there is another version worth mentioning, the Mysterio of the Ultimate Universe. While other characters would get a complete top-to-down reimagining for Marvel's rebooted Ultimate Comics, the Ultimate version of Mysterio wasn't all that different from the 616 version. He first showed up in Ultimate Spider-Man Annual No. 3, and his biggest difference from his 616 counterpart was that he had a worse costume. While some would find fault with a fishnet-covered green bodysuit and a fishbowl helmet, you can't argue that it isn't immediately recognizable. The ultimate version of Mysterio had none of his predecessors' flair, using only a boring ghost-like effect over his face as a disguise. As it turns out, though, there was a reason that the ultimate Mysterio wasn't all that different from the 616 version. In a truly weird plot twist, it was eventually revealed that they weren't actually two characters at all. Instead, the ultimate Mysterio was a ridiculously high-tech android piloted across the universes by the 616 Mysterio in order to accomplish the same kinds of crimes that he got up to in his home universe. No, really. It happened in Spider-Man, a series where the core universe's Peter Parker traveled across dimensions to mentor the ultimate universe's new Spider-Man, Miles Morales. If that's all sounding just a bit familiar, it's because the plot was loosely adapted for 2018's Into the Spider-Verse motion picture, along with a couple of other cross-dimensional Spider-Man stories. Spider-Man ended with Mysterio in custody in the Ultimate Universe, leaving the role of Mysterio to be filled by other, lesser criminal geniuses. Quentin Beck is the original, but he's not the only Mysterio. In Amazing Spider-Man No. 141, Daniel Burkhart appears as a stuntman who took over for Beck, who had faked his own death at the time. While it's hard for any villainous replacement to surpass the original, Burkhart was less notable than most and never really had a unique spin on the Mysterio identity. His most well-known stories involved him pretending to be a resurrected Quentin Beck in order to torment Spider-Man. When your best-known plot involves pretending to be a more beloved character and generally succeeding, you're not really going to last long in a comic book universe. Even when he got title billing in his own miniseries, Spider-Man The Mysterio Manifesto, he spent most of the story dressed as an entirely different second-string supervillain, Jack-O-Lantern. Spooky. Created by Rachel and Terry Dotson and Kevin Smith in Spider-Man Black Cat The Evil That Men Do, Francis Klum is arguably the worst Mysterio. Ah, Spider-Man, my nemesis! You won't touch me this time! <laughs> Unlike others, Klum actually has superpowers. He's a mutant with the ability to teleport, along with some assorted telepathy and telekinesis. In a complicated series of events, Klum ended up accidentally getting knocked off a bridge by Spider-Man, which led to Klum losing part of his leg, and naturally, this led him to embark on a crusade of vengeance against Spider-Man dressed as one of his old enemies. His crusade of vengeance didn't last long, though. He was interrupted by both Beck and Burkhart, who were not happy about gimmick infringement. Even worse for Klum, he was eventually stabbed in the chest by thousands of spiders wearing the form of a school nurse. That's comics, baby. While Burkhart and Klum popped over to cover for Beck while he was dead, who fought Spider-Man while Beck was stuck in the Ultimate Universe after the events of Spider-Man? A brand new character named Mysterion. Created by David Lopez and Christopher Yost in Amazing Spider-Man number 22, which was the 23rd issue because, you know what? Just forget it. Comics, am I right? Anyway, Mysterion was, well, basically the same as previous Mysterios, except not quite as competent. In the issue, he picks up the costume and gear from Hobgoblin before running afoul of both the Punisher, who kills supervillains, and the superior Spider-Man a Spider-Man with the soul of Dr. Octopus who also kills supervillains. 
Somewhat surprisingly, he actually managed to survive the encounter and popped up a couple more times in the Marvel Universe, most notably when he took on the unbeatable Squirrel Girl and all of the Avengers with robot dinosaurs. Unfortunately, without an actual name or defining features, we're unlikely to see much of Mysterion going forward. Considering how closely his power set aligns with movie magic, you would have expected Mysterio to make an appearance in a cinematic Spider-Man adaptation long before 2019's Spider-Man Far From Home. As it turns out, he quite nearly did. Jeffrey Henderson, a storyboard artist who worked with Sam Raimi on the original Spider-Man trilogy, revealed that a planned Spider-Man 4 would have included Mysterio, along with a handful of other Spider-Foes. Originally, the idea was to run through lower-tier villains like the Shocker, the Prowler, Rhino, Stiltman, and of course Mysterio, since they figured they would never be chosen as the main antagonists of other films. As for who would portray the master of illusions in the quick cameo, Henderson suggested that Bruce Campbell, a longtime Sam Raimi collaborator who had made brief cameos in all of the previous Spider-Man movies, could step beneath the bowl to play Quentin Beck. It never happened, but it's hard not to be intrigued by what the scenery-chewing Campbell could have done with one of Mysterio's many monologues. Romance. I am French. Uh it took him a long time to get his big screen due, but Mysterio finally made the jump to theaters courtesy of Jake Gyllenhaal's portrayal in 2019's Spider-Man Far From Home. In some ways, his long journey to the big screen is a good thing. With the huge advances in CGI and special effects technology made in the last couple of decades, there's arguably no better time for a supervillain to harness the lifelike illusions and movie magic trickery of Mysterio. Plus, given Gyllenhaal's deeply unsettling portrayal of an amoral psychopath in 2014's Nightcrawler, it's almost guaranteed that the villain will be just as creepy and unsettling as his best stories make him out to be. Here's hoping this latest incarnation of this enduring Marvel character ends up sticking around for more than a single outing, and signals a future in which the MCU's villains only get weirder and wilder. Check out our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite movies are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.